It's Tuesday, July 27th, 2021. This is another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Just keeping myself honest, trying to record as often as I can, trying to be as active as possible with the uh, recording and the publishing. I've got other things in the works for the organization. And uh, my associates are keeping me on the straight and narrow, we'll say. They're, they're keeping me on my toes. Today's episode is, uh, is about, I, I want to say like manifestation, like the law of attraction. What you think about is what you get. What you think is is what you see, and what you perceive is is what you find. Essentially, what you perceive is what you understand. What you perceive is what you contemplate. Why? Because it's as far as your understanding goes. And it makes sense. Because if you don't know that one plus one equals two, you 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 won't be able to grasp the concept that is two and how it breaks up into one plus one. So your perception necessarily perceive uh, your your perception necessarily uh, constructs reality. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Your perception constructs reality. And reality is uh, difficult for some people. Shit, I've been through a couple instances where reality got hard for me. And uh, I needed to uh, think quickly. I needed to deconstruct and understand reality in uh, the span of moments. In the span of seconds. Even uh, in those instances that felt like an eternity. You have to remain calm, keep breathing, and computing. You can't seize up. I was talking with a, uh, an associate over dinner. And we were talking about um, how it's important not to seize up when the stress levels turn to up. It's important not to freeze. I know we're told often that that uh, humans have an innate fight or flight response to a lot of external stimuli in the world. It either causes somebody to um, to act or to freeze for whatever reason. It's supposed to enhance survivability. It's supposed to enhance it. But if you don't know how to act, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't experienced before, or you can't perceive the outcome, if you can't think ahead to what one plus one equals, then you, again, you won't know about two. If you don't understand how one plus one operates, then you won't understand two. So, as much as it, it's important to uh, to memorize, to memorize and and have that muscle memory, it's also, <clears throat> I mean, like have that have that muscle memory. So when you get started on something, you're able to follow through, you know how to put one and one together. It's important that you know and understand the operation, the operation about uh, how one and one operate together and why it equals two. I think I fucked that one up. Hold on. As important as it is to have muscle memory and to follow through 
and or uh, automatically have that answer on hand, one plus one equals two, it's even more important to know the interaction, to know the interaction of one plus one and how one plus one equals two. It's important to know how to get started adding one to one. There you go. There you go. That sounds a little better, Alex. Come on, man. Come on, man. <clears throat> and I say this because <clears throat> some folks who freeze up, or not all folks who freeze up, are are total novices or or amateurs. I've met some people in my life who are trained, trained for uh, high stress situations. And something will just cause them to freeze. Something will cause them to freeze up. For whatever reason, um, it could be because of a a past trauma, a PTSD of some kind, or or just a, a, a new a new circumstance a new contextual premise or parameter that they're not able to contemplate fully or consider and appreciate fully and so it'll cause them to freeze up and I'm talking people with years of experience males and females men and women years of experience and then suddenly they are without they are as if without resources they they don't know what to do next and now that's a tough spot to be in especially when you're in a position to be dependent on when you're in a position of authority when you're in a leadership role where folks rely on you to always be moving always have action in the works so when you freeze up it fucks up a lot of people's plans for whatever reason they uh, they don't see that three plus negative one still equals two You see? And so muscle memory would tell them that it's supposed to be one plus one equaling two. That's muscle memory. Perception would would let you know that you can arrive at two a number of different ways. That's perception. That's, that's, uh, that's a vision of, of the end and appreciating the ability to arrive at two through different avenues four minus two equaling two and so on I mean we're just talking basic simple numbers And it's ideal, it's ideal to be exposed to as many, to as many different uh, circumstances, so that way you have that experience beforehand. And we weren't necessarily talking about math. My associate and I were talking about uh, weapons, really, knives, guns, and what it means to uh, have been trained with them. What it means to be familiar with them. How growing up around weapons is different than than being trained with them as an adult. There's a more... uh, (laughs) There's a more... There's a more... There's a more... It's an intimate knowledge of weapons. When you... When you grow up with them and, and they're a facet of your life, a piece of your life, 
you're much more familiar with how they work, how they operate. It's not, it's not uh, difficult to handle them, to talk about them, where uh, as an adult, if you're brought into them, it's, it's a slightly more taboo. And so if you go to whisper in somebody's ear, it's a little bit more obvious that you're talking about guns, that you're talking about knives or some other taboo, illicit item, contraband, if you will, contraband. No, it's just, it's just taboo. But what's good about it, what's good about it is growing up, being familiar with uh, weapons means that you are less likely to freeze, means that you're less likely to, uh, that you're less likely to hesitate. Why? Because you already know how they work. You're familiar with the end result. And you're aware that you can arrive at the end result a number of different ways. In this case, one plus one will always equal two. And still you know that something like zero plus two will equal two also. Whereas instead, when you're trained in one plus one equaling two, and that's all you know to equal two. If, if you're trained regimentally uh, in a standardized format, and all you learn is one plus one equals two, insofar as guns are concerned, then you will only then you will only know two as being equal to one plus one. And uh, again, the the one plus the one. There could be a number of different factors. It could be as simple as, uh, let's see, what's a good way to, to, to analogize it? One being, <laughs> this is a little hard. It's a mental exercise. Hold on. And I mean, it's, it's simple. But at the same time, trying to analogize only one plus one, like what's the most standard way that individuals learn how to squeeze a firearm? Uh, you draw, or you you aim and you shoot, right? One plus one equals two. Draw, aim, shoot. And that's all they're trained in. Some aren't trained in, in the shooting happening all of a sudden. I don't mean like negligent discharges or, or firearm malfunctions. But some point, but some people, they don't draw. Especially with those, uh, don't know if you've seen those uh, snub nose or subcompact or, or Derringer pieces. There's some there's some pieces that just aren't made to even draw. You can keep them in your in your holster. You can keep them in your pocket. In a jacket, you can shoot right from there. It could be shoot, aim, shoot. Without the need to draw. I mean, essentially cutting a corner, right? But, no, not cutting a corner. Essentially, uh, skipping, skipping a step that is equal to a, uh, a foundational step. That is a basic step that most people learn. And so they expect someone to draw, aim, and fire. And few, few, maybe the most avid, the most learned the most uh, intimate with their firearms. They know you could fire it without even needing to draw it, without even needing to aim it, just instinctually. 
second nature. Second nature being above, being above muscle memory. The, the muscle memory is, is in squeezing the trigger, keeping your, holding your hand firm, and only squeezing with the index or whichever finger you fire with, so as to not jerk it, not slap it. See, that's that's all muscle memory. What you do when you're actually firing it. But second nature is knowing how to fire it, knowing when to fire it. That's that occurs on at the drop of a dime. That occurs at a moment's notice where you're living uh, you're living one life that's one and then a stressor arises some uh, circumstantial how do I say it circumstantial catalyst that's one one plus one and so you fire that equals two so and so we arrive we arrive at the end and we know how to get there a number of ways these are going to be uh, more so instincts than they are going to be uh, than they are going to be uh, how do I call that phases or steps steps to uh, steps to firing a weapon no, they're just, it's just going to be instinct. And it's going to be one fluid motion, even. One fluid motion. Because when you become familiar with firearms, it's not going to be... Uh, <clears throat> it's, sometimes it's not always going to be a last resort. I understand that history in the United States has uh, posed or has framed using firearms as a last resort. I mean, there are already areas in the United States where a firearm is a fucking first resort, right? But even then, it's not used righteously. It's not... It's not used to the, uh, to the benefit of, uh, of business, of the community, of co- community development. It's not used to fortify. It's used for... Uh, gangs and turf wars and other fuckery so understanding the role that that instinct plays understanding the role that perception plays and how and how freezing freezing can kill you freezing can fail you and knowing when to act how to act and it's really knowing how to act because even if you stop to think about when to act you've already failed that's that's a hesitation it just has to be one fluid motion going from stressor to to de-stressor from stressor to decompressor from (laughs) from uh, conflict to resolution in one step that requires you taking a breath that requires you remaining calm that requires you being aware being cognizant of the fact that though it's easy you know firing a gun is easy using any weapon Deploying any tool, any instrument is easy. Knowing why, that's where, uh, that's where the money's made. That's where the money gets made. You can follow us on Instagram. That's incorporating underscore associates dot IA. Hit us up on Patreon. 
subscribe for uh, for monthly. You can also send us donations. Um, keep the operation nonprofit, like always. Besides that, just something to think about. Have a nice Thursday.